a while ago, I was working at a gallery. I had an affair with the owner of the gallery. She was a bit older, like 45. It was going on for two years. It ended when she was expecting a baby, which she named after me. Uh, perfume Witch is someone who practice uh, with uh, scent and uh, use elements of nature by healing other people and giving back to nature and becoming a perfume witch or how I became a perfume witch. I was obsessed with, with flowers and then I started to experiment more with uh, the art in flowers and then I um, got into uh, scent because I was really interested to using flowers or scent uh, using as a medium to communicate with people and then the, the witch part came more afterwards because then I found out that being a witch is all about being one with nature in a herbalist kind of way. I was uh, going to school in Graz in France and they have more uh, traditional way, more, how do you say, for me like old fashioned, like a lot with like roses and these kind of type of smells, so it's, I, I felt like I was more uh, like different and they couldn't really understand my scent and smell because they were like, oh that's too herbal or so that kind of sometimes clashed but it was really interesting to learn like the, the technical part of it and how you can use it in like a commerce way but that's not my mm. where my direction where I want to go. It actually been proven as well and those are the animalic scents and so it's for example musk or amber gris and it's in a lot of products and I think people are attracted to them because it's like similar, it has a leathery kind of skin-like smell so people can identify with it. So that's why people have this kind of familiar, I don't know, attached smell. Because it's, it's kind of crazy because ambergris comes from, it's like a stone in a, in a sperm whale and it's created by uh, when it can process like, I don't know, like a beak of a squid and then it, it, it uh, turns into some kind of jelly and then when they die uh, there's a stone and that stone when the sperm will wash, washes up and you find the stone it could be like millions worth but I, I smelled it on its own and it has such a yeah, special smell, it's really waxy but it also smells like a lot of like skin creams so I think that's all connected. So how I go to work is I receive a confession and then I write down the date and time and uh, that's how I kind of archive it or identify the smell because that's in the most anonymous way to if someone wants to buy it and then I don't know to look it up but anyway so uh, I just think of what it makes me feel, the confession, or uh, sometimes I take elements of uh, if someone describes where it was, or, or I use elements and use it in a more metaphorical way. Definitely, it would start dramatic, the smell, but like a perfume has like a top note, middle note and a bass note because it has like different layers so when you uh, spray on a perfume you, you smell the top note at first and then it goes to the bass note so I would go from dramatic to morning, morning and then relief or something liberating. It's called aphasia and aphasia is a communication disorder that is caused by a brain injury and it means that you're literally unable to speak because that part of your brain, the language uh, part of your brain isn't working. So the reason why I chose it 
is because I'm telling basically stories through sand. It's actually the first perfume I've ever made, like the official one. And I made it in school. It's just based on the memories that I have of all the great smells that I ever smelled before, but not necessarily perfume. So at school you had this whole library of like perfume oils. So I was smelling literally everything and then kind of made a selection out of that. And that, yeah. And then it just came together like that. So Aphasia is basically uh, the mother of all the other little scents that I'm making. I'm a bit in this one, it's very <laughs>